Let's take a look at three different ways to add objects to your workspace from the common space and check out objects. Here I am in a windchill connected Creo parametric session. Let me start off by creating a new workspace. It's prompting me to log in. And let's go to the workspace command and choose new to create a new workspace. Let me type in today's date. That way I can tell how old the workspace is and then use the drop down list to select a context to which it should be associated. Then I'll click the OK button. And now I've got my new workspace created. Let's close out of here. If I click on workspace from the folder browser, you'll notice that the workspace is empty because I just created it like literally five seconds ago. Okay, let's take a look at adding to workspace. One way that you can do that is from search results or from browsing. Let's use the search field in the upper right hand corner. This is the simple search. I will use a wildcard right now it's set to all types. That's fine. Let's hit the enter key and now the search is crunching. Let's now find the object that I am interested in. Okay, looks like a lot of WT parts over here. I don't care about those. All right, here's the assembly that I am interested in. And so you can check it, one or more objects, then use this button in the toolbar in order to add to workspace. You can also right click on the object that you're interested in and choose add to workspace. And here we get a form. It's going to grab all the dependent objects by default. You have a drop down list where you could change it from required to none or all, but required is usually what you want when you are working in CAD. Everything is good in here. Let's click the OK button. And we saw the swimming sharks a moment ago. Let me collapse the navigator. And now in my workspace, I have 32 different objects. So that is one way of adding to the workspace using the add to workspace icon from searching or browsing. For the next method, I am going to add something to my workspace by using the open button. So when I go to open over here, it takes me to my workspace. You can go right to the windchill common space. And I can search in libraries and I know that I want to grab a fastener so I can find the folder in which it is located. And then I can say, hey, you know what? I want to grab this M12. Let me see. Let me get this one over here. That is good. I will click the open button. And so now it's going to open and retrieve it into Creo Parametric. If I go back to my workspace, we can use the filter here to narrow down the list of objects. And when I hit the enter key, you can see that this particular object is now in my workspace. Since it is a member of a family table, it also grabbed the generic for the family table. So again, you can use the open button to navigate directly to something and when you open it, it will be in your workspace. A third way to look at opening objects or excuse me, adding objects to your workspace is also by using the open button. But if you happen to know the exact name of the object, you can type it in the file name folder. For example, I know that I have a part called Batlef. I will enter in the name of the part with the extension. You have to have the extension on there. Then I will click the open button. And in this particular situation, it searches the common space and then adds it to your workspace as well. Again, we can use the folder browser to go back to the workspace and I can filter down the table. Let's just use the letter B and there you can see that we have this particular part in the workspace as well. All right, so those are three different ways to add something to your workspace. Now let's take a look at checking out objects and three different ways of doing that. There are probably more than three ways. I'm absolutely sure there are more than three ways, but let's take a look at three common ways of checking something out. Let's do a checkout while adding something to our workspace. And this time I will use browse. I'm going to go to the windchill common space. Let me go to my engineering folder. And I know that I've got an object that I want to add from in here. So here's the object that I want to add to my workspace. So once again, I can right click on it and choose add to workspace. 
And now it's giving me a list of all the different objects in here. And I decide that, hey, you know what? I want to check out, which one do I want to show? I want to check out the door when I check out this entire assembly. I was checking out this particular assembly, but here's the door. I can select it, and then you can use this icon in the toolbar to select the object for checkout. There you can see the little status symbol over there. So when you are adding something to your workspace, you can perform a checkout. Let's click the OK button again, and we saw the swimming sharks moving down there. Now we are looking in uh, this particular folder. Let me go to my workspace. And I'm looking in the workspace over here. I scroll down and we can see the status symbol for the object in the workspace indicating this is checked out. And be aware that this icon is going to have different colors depending on whether it's checked out to you or to someone else. If it's checked out to you, it's going to be yellow. If it's checked out to someone else, it's going to be gray. You don't have to remember that, but all you have to remember is position your mouse over the status icon and it'll tell you that it's checked out and who has it checked out. So that is one way of checking out objects. You can do it when you're adding to the workspace. Another way of checking out objects is by selecting them in the list. You can select one or more objects, and then in the toolbar over here, you can use this icon to check it out. You'll notice that all these different objects here as well also have a checkout icon in the toolbar across from them and that's a quick way of just checking out that one individual object here it tells me that the checkout started and the checkout succeeded everything is good in there let me now just close anything i've got open in here i don't need them anymore and i can also erase from session now let's open something up and take a look at the third way of checking out objects i know i want to open up an assembly and so here is my robot assembly over here. Let me turn off the display of my datums. And so here I have it open. Let's say that I am going to make a change to this top level assembly over here. I don't have it checked out. Just to show you that once again, here's the top level assembly. Let me go to my workspace. It will be find it here in the list. Once again, I'm going to use the filter to narrow down the list. Right now, this particular object is not checked out. But let's say I start doing something that will necessitate this to be checked out. Let's say that I go to create a datum plane at the top level of the assembly. I get this conflicts dialog box where it gives me a warning. This object is read only as it is not checked out. And the default option is to check the object out. Now, if you go to the drop down list, we have three other additional choices. Now, one here is revise and check out now. I recommend that you do not use revise and check out from this dialog box if you are using WT parts, if you're using those wind chill parts that I talked about in another video. The problem is if you do the revise and check out here in CAD, it will revise the CAD document without revising the wind chill part that's associated to it, and it'll break that link. If you want to reestablish that link, it's a pain in the neck for your CAD administrators. It's like a 20 step process. Don't do that. And I believe if I remember correctly, you can actually turn off this option from appearing in the CAD side. There's this other option in here called continue and continue will allow you to make changes to this object without checking it out. And that's a way of doing sort of hypothetical what if, hey, let me see if I really like these changes that I am proposing. And if you make a bunch of changes, you can always check it out later to prevent other people from working on it at the same time. One thing to be aware of, when you use this continue option, if someone else happens to be making changes to this at the same time and they check it out and check it back in, you can actually do something called stomping on their iteration. You can end up overriding the changes that they made. So communication is real important when you're using Windchill. So again, continue allows you to go forward making the changes without checking out the object. And here is the fourth choice, make read only. 
And that means you are making this object read only to yourself in this workspace, just in this workspace. You can prevent yourself from accidentally modifying objects in your workspace that you don't want to make changes to. And the way that you do that is by making the objects read only. Also, there's an option that you can use if you want everything in your workspace automatically set to read only to prevent accidental modifications. And that way you can really only make changes to stuff when you check them out. But again, I actually want to check this out now, so I will choose that action over here. Let's click the OK button. And the checkout started and succeeded. Let's create this datum plane real quick just by selecting a reference and hitting the check mark. So in that way, I've actually made a change to the model over here. If I hit the save button, I'll end up saving that change. Now let's go back to our workspace and you can see that the status symbols are updated here. So now the Bender assembly is checked out. We have a plus sign indicating that it is modified locally and the modifications at a minimum need to be uploaded. And the other two objects are still checked out because I haven't actually done anything to them. They are not modified or anything. So again, those are the ways, just a few of the ways that you can add to workspace or check out an object. You can add to workspace from the search or browse functions over here. You can also do it when you are using the file open dialog box, either by browsing to the correct folder or by entering the file name directly. And for checking out, you can check out while you are adding something to your workspace. You can also check out in the workspace as well. And you can check out on the fly in Creo Parametric if you are attempting to modify an object that is not checked out. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.